Welcome folks. Uh, we are interested now in showing you how to use the Y delta connections or convergence to solve for circuit problems as part of the electric uh, circuit laboratories uh, that we have here at Washington State University. So again, we use those videos to help our students and at the same time to share this knowledge with whoever is interested on YouTube. So uh, let's talk about the Y and the delta connections. So for example, you might have a load that will be having this shape, uh, which what we call is the Y shape. So you have three resistors here. Those three resistors are connected in what we call the Y connection. So if you look into this uh, uh, connection over here, we can have three resistors. I call them R1, R2, R3. And there are uh, four nodes, three other nodes, and one centered node. So the other nodes are uh, labeled as node A, B, C, in this order, A, B, C, in the clockwise direction, in the direction of the clock, right? clockwise direction. And we have this intermediate node. Now, those three resistors are not in parallel nor in series because they are connected to some external connections to the Y connection. So, for example, the current will come from node A, will go through R1. There is a current will come from node B, will go through R2. There is a current will come from node C, will go to R3. Uh, that means those three resistors are not in series. The current comes through here will split, the current comes through here will split, and the current comes from the bottom resistor will also split. Also, those three resistors are not in parallel because the voltage through R1 is not the same as the voltage through R3 and is not the same as the voltage through uh, R2. Uh, you know, those are three separate nodes. Node A, B, C are three separate nodes. Now keep in mind that you might see a Y connection like this, but it is very easily can be drawn as what we call a T connection. So the T connection and the Y connection are the same thing. If you come to R1 here, you can imagine that you can move it or rotate it to be horizontal like this. So you're going to have node A and then R1 here. And that's what we did here, node A and R1. And also the same can be done for node B and R2. We can move it to be horizontal over here. So we're going to have node B and R2 over here. So the Y connection and the T connection are the same connection. So sometimes we call it T connection. T connection or Y connection is the same. Uh, there is this intermediate node here in the middle, which is equivalent to that node. So Y connection or T connection is the same. Uh, the most common name for it is Y connection, but sometimes you will see it named as a T connection. It's the same. Also, you can have something we call delta connection. So this is a delta connection. Here we have three nodes only. There is no intermediate node. And the name of the nodes are A, B, C in this order, A, B, C in the clockwise direction. So keep in mind that those uh, three resistors are not in series on, or in parallel. So the current comes to node A will be branched through RC and RB. The current coming to node B will be branched through RC and RA. And the current comes through node C will be branched through RB and RA. Another thing that is important is that node A will have the resistors connected to it RC and RB and node B will have the resistors connected to it that are C and RA. Uh, also, by the same token, node C will have the two resistors RB and RA connected to it. So in the delta connection, if I say that where is RA, this is RA, is the opposite of the node. The opposite of the node going to be RA. Where is RB? Going to be the opposite of the node. Uh, so here is RB and that's node B. Where is RC? RC is going to be the opposite of node uh, C. Uh, so basically, uh, any node, like let's say that node C, will have the two resistors that don't have its name. RB and RA are connected to node C. 
and that's important so again those three resistors are not in parallel or in series uh, and they can also be drawn as something we call by connection the by connection is the same as the delta connection you can see that here so we call this is a by connection we have rc here which is the same as that we have rb here which is the same as that and we have ra which is the same as that sometimes we like to draw the resistors in a horizontal and vertical fashion uh, such as the T connection that represents the Y and the Y connection that represents the Delta uh, So we like to draw them sometimes like this. It is easier in the eye, but they are the same as the Y and the Delta Sometimes you will have a Delta connection and you want it to convert it to a Y and by converting it to a Y will make the circuit easier to solve for or Sometimes you can have a Y connection and you can convert the Y connection to a delta con uh, connection and that will make the circuit uh, to be easier to solve for. So what we're going to do next is we're going to show you how to uh, convert the delta to Y and the Y to delta. And once we know how to do that, then we will be able to solve the example. So if you have a Y load, you can convert it to a delta load, but also if you have a delta node, you can convert it to a Y node. When you do the conversion, it is important that you keep the same order of the node names. So we have ABC here, we have ABC here, and then the resistor names got to be in the same order. So R1 connected to node A, node A is node 1, so we have R1 connected to node A in the Y connection, R2 connected to node B is the second node, and R3 is connected to node 3, which is node C. When you convert it to a delta, uh, you're going to keep the same order, A, B, C, and the resistor names are always opposite to the node. So R, R A going to be opposite of node A, R, B going to be opposite of node B, and R, C going to be opposite of node C. So now we are interested in telling you the equations are used if we're going to convert the y to a delta so to convert the y to a delta we're going to start with the nodes that's how we're going to do it so this is our y connection we're going to convert it to a delta so i'm going to basically draw the nodes node a b c that's the first step you keep the same nodes in the circuit and then you're going to basically add those resistors right as we mentioned earlier so resistor a going to be opposite of node a and resistor B going to be opposite of node B, and resistor C going to be opposite of node C. Now, what's the equations to do the conversions? For RA, which is this resistor here, RA, will take the inter product terms of the Y values. So I have the values of the Y resistors. So I'm going to do the inner products, which means R1 times R2, uh, plus R2 times R3, plus R3 times R1, so I'll do the inner products in the numerator, and I will divide it with R1. If I divide it with R1, that gives me RA, the first resistor opposite of node A. For the second resistor, RB, you get the same inner product values, the sum of the inner product values, over the second resistor value, and that will give me RB. And to do RC, you get the inner product values, the sum of the inner product values, and then you're going to divide them by the, th the third resistor. So to do the conversions, I usually evaluate the sum of the inner product values, which is the numerator term. And I can call it R delta, or I can call it Rx. I can give it any value. I calculate the products, and then I add them up. And once I get this value, I divided by R1 to get RA, I divided by R2 to get RB, I divided by R3 to get RC. Now, can we do the opposite? Of course we can. So now you can convert the delta connection into a Y connection. So the way you want to do it is to do the conversion, you're going to start with the nodes A, B, C. So we have node A, node B, node C. And we're going to add that intermediate node, that intermediate node in the middle of the delta. 
So I know that R1 gonna be connected from node one to the intermediate node, and then R2 gonna be connected from node two, which is B, to the intermediate node, and R3 gonna be connected from C3 to the intermediate node, now, if I know the values are A, R, B, R, C, can I find R1, R2, R3? Yes, we can. This is the equation for it. R1 gonna equal to the product of R, B times R, C over the sum of R, A, B, C. So the denominator is the sum, but the product on the top basically comes from here. If I wanted to add this resistor that will come from node A to the intermediate, I'm going to multiply those two resistors that are connected to node A. So resistor R1 connected to node A. The two resistors connected to node A are going to be RC times RB. So it is the product of the resistors connected to that node over the sum of the three resistors. Similarly for R2, which is connected to node 2, by following the same analogy, it's going to be RC times RA over the sum of the three resistors. So it's gonna be RC times RA over the sum of the three resistors. Finally, to find R3, which is connected to node C, so we come to node C over here, and we say that's gonna be the product of those two resistors, which are RA times RB over the sum of the three resistors. So again, if you look into the denominator in this case, the denominator is gonna be identical, which is the sum of the three resistors, so I can call the sum of the three resistors Ry, and to evaluate R1, I basically do the product of the two resistors that are touching this node over the sum, and for R2, we get the product of the touching resistors over the sum, and for R3 will be the product of the touching resistors over the sum. By doing that, we converted this delta connection into a Y connection. Now this becomes easy in solving circuit problems sometimes, and let's look at a circuit or example where we can use the delta Y conversion to analyze a circuit problem. So here is an, an example. We have a circuit like this, and we're saying that we want to solve for the currents in the circuit. So we want to solve for each current in the circuit, so I wanted to solve for I1, I2, I3, I4, I5 and I6 in this circuit. Now keep in mind that I1 that goes through R1 is the same as the current that goes through the 10 volts voltage source because if you apply KCL at this node, current leaving will equal to the current going in. So the current here is I1, that means the current through R7 is I1 uh, because if you apply KCL here, you're gonna get I1 coming in, I1 leaving, I1 coming in, I1 leaving. So the current here is I1, the current in the 10 volts is I1, and the current through the uh, 2K ohm resistor, or R1, is also I1. If you look into the circuit, you have all the resistor values, and you have the voltage source value. The technique for this uh, circuit problem is to find R equivalent. So if you start to look for R equivalent, you start to have problem. Those two resistors are not in parallel, and they aren't in series because the current I1 will split and then the voltage across R2 is not the same as the voltage across R4 because they don't share the same node at both ends. So they are not in parallel. It's a clearly that it's a delta connection. The same story happens for those two resistors at the bottom. They are not in series nor in parallel and clearly it is a delta connection. So this is a delta connection up, this is a delta connection down, which can be uh, drawn in square form like this using the vertical and horizontal connections. Uh, so here, if you make R2 uh, basically vertical, we will have it like this here, and R4 is vertical over here, so you will have it like that, and the node on the top is the same as this one. And the same thing for those two bottom resistors, you can make them vertical, and the node at the bottom is the same as the node on the bottom. So sometimes the circuit will look like this, and we need to know that this here is a delta connection, or what we call the bi connection. Uh, so delta or bi is the same thing. So clearly that's the delta connection here. If you're gonna look into the top triangle, this is obviously a delta connection. Uh, and now we can name the uh, nodes for it. So the top can be called node A. 
and then the next one over here gonna be node B and then this node gonna be node 3 so keep in mind that when you do the uh, uh, node naming to name the nodes you're gonna go clockwise A B C in the same order as the alphabetical order A B C which is the same as this uh, rectangle if you have a circuit in this shape it's gonna be A here B here and then C here so either way would work you can do this kind of circuit or that kind of circuit will work the idea is that you want to convert this delta connection into a Y and let's see what happens by doing that so we're gonna come to the three nodes the nodes A B C here is my nodes A B C that's where we start with the three nodes node A B C and then I'm gonna convert it to a Y so I need that intermediate node so a node in the middle here which corresponds to that so this is node A here and then this is node B here and this is node C here this is the intermediate node I want to convert those Delta connection into a Y and then I'll draw the remaining of the circuit and let's see if that will make sense to us so we're gonna start with R1 here uh, which is comes from node uh, A to the intermediate node I'm not gonna call it R1 I'm gonna call it R11 because I already have R1 so R11 corresponds to R1 in the equation that I have and then node 2 which is B gonna have a resistor called R22 and node C gonna have a resistor called R33 because I already have R1, R2, and R3, so I have to create a new names for it. Uh, so once I draw those three uh, resistors in the new connection, now I can draw the remaining of the circuit. So I will have R1 here, and then the 10 volt source, then R7, then I will have R5 and R6 that are connected to node A and B. So if we draw the circuit, this is what we have. Here is R1 going to node 1, that's the voltage source, which corresponds to that. R7 is here, which corresponds to that. Then the bottom node gonna have R5 going to C and R6 going to B. So clearly, this circuit is uh, different, but it's equivalent to that by doing the delta to a Y conversion. Now, if you look into the circuit, the circuit is easy to follow because uh, those two resistors are in series R33 and R5 are in series and R22 and R6 are in series so I can combine those two resistors into one resistor and those two resistors into one resistor and then the equivalent gonna be in parallel so this way I can minimize the resistors and come up with our equivalent so now we know that this technique will work. Let's calculate the values of R11. So R11 going to be the product uh, over the sum. Now remember that the name of the resistors changed. So if you wanted to calculate RA, you're going to get the product of the adjacent, right? Over the sum, that's the equation, right? So when you do that, you will get 571.4 ohms. To calculate the second resistor R22 which is connected to node 2 you're gonna get the product of the adjacent over the sum so that's gonna be R3 times R4 over the sum and this is gonna equal to 1.4 uh, 1.143 kilo ohm finally when you want to calculate R3 which is R33 that's connected to node 3 it's gonna be the product of those two over the sum so uh, it's going to be basically uh, 285.7 ohms. Now the name of the resistors can change based on the given problem, but it's the same technique and that's why you need to follow the order and the techniques of doing the conversions. Now we can basically move to the next slide where we're going to say that we started with this original circuit and then we were able to convert the top delta into a Y. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert those two resistors, combine them into one resistor, and combine those two resistors into one resistor. So the circuit will look like this. I will have the 10 volts that comes from here, the 2K ohm resistor, that's from here. This is R11, and then 
Combining those two resistors, R33 and R5, I will call it R55, and they're going to be basically the sum of those two resistors. They are in series. And on the other side, I will have those two resistors in series. They will be combined, and I will call it R66. Those are the value of the combined resistors. They meet at the bottom, and then we're going to have R7 connected to it, going back to the 10 volts. Now, this circuit is very simple and it's easy to do. We can find R equivalent for the circuit. So the idea is, once you find R equivalent of the circuit, you can find the total current of the voltage source, which is the same as the I1. So we need to find R equivalent here. So R equivalent is nothing but R1 in series with R11. This R11 going to be in series with the equivalent resistance of that, which is R55 in parallel with R66. And that's going to be in series with R7. So R equivalent going to be R1 plus R11 plus the parallel combination of R55 with R66. This symbol here means the parallel combination. For two resistors, it is the product over the sum, which means multiply those two values divide by the sum of those two values, and then in series with R7. So by doing that, R equivalent was found to be 5.096 kilo ohm, roughly 5.1 kilo ohm. Now I can find I1. I1 going to be the voltage over R equivalent, so I end up having 1.9624 milliamp. Now we know that I1 will go through this resistor, uh, R11, and then it's going to branch through, through those two parallel resistors. So I can find uh, the current in R55 using the current divider technique. So to find I5, we're going to say that it will equal to the opposite resistor over the sum of the two times the total current. This is applied when we have two resistors in parallel. So I5 will equal to R66 over R55 plus R66 times I1, and that will equal to 0 0.566 milliamp. So I was able to find I5 now, and I can do I6 by the same token. So I6 is going to be the opposite over the sum times the total current. So it's going to be R55 over R55 plus R66 times the total current I1. This was 1.397 milliamp, roughly 1.4 milliamp. Now I know I5 and I6. Uh, so the trick is, what can I solve for at this point? So uh, if I go into the original uh, circuit over here, this is the original circuit. I know I5 and I know I6. That means I know what's the voltage across R5 and I know what's the voltage across R6. So the voltage across R5 is known and the voltage across R6 is known. Uh, the voltage here is going to be I5 times R5 and the voltage uh, across R6 is going to be R6 times I6. So I know those two voltages. I can apply KVL here to find the voltage from node B to node C. I can find the voltage here by KVL. So by KVL, I can say that VBC will equal to R66 times I6 minus R5 times I5. I apply KVL here, and I will be able to find what VBC is it ends up being a negative voltage, negative 1.43 volts. So if VBC is negative, then I4 going to also be negative, and I4 going to be VBC over R4, and that was negative 0 0.7165 milliamps. Now I know what's I4, and I know I5, I6, and I1. So if I come to this node, node B, I can say that I3 will equal to I4 plus I6. I apply KCL at this node. So by applying KCL at this node, I can say that I3 will equal to I4 plus I6. By doing the addition, I got 0 0.6805 milliamp. 
and the same token can be applied at this node so I can solve for I2 I can say that I2 will equal to I5 minus I4 and that will equal to 1.2825 milliamps so and this is basically the solution to this problem I was able to solve for I1 I2 I3 I4 I5 and I6 using the Delta Y conversion so basically if you have a circuit like this where you say that I know all the resistor values and I know the voltage I know that I need to find R equivalent to solve for the current and then I can work the currents back however when you look into R equivalent you have problems here because those resistors are connected in a delta connection which are not in parallel nor in series so I cannot find R equivalent so to do the R equivalent you convert what we did here we end up converting the top delta connection into a Y and by doing that we end up with this circuit and by combining those into one resistor we were able to find R equivalent very easily in the circuit and once we solved for R equivalent we found I1 and we were able to solve for the circuit also this circuit will be simulated in B-SPICE to validate the values we have in another video so if you wanted to know how we simulate the circuit in B-SPICE please watch the other video that associates with it. Uh, thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck to you.